Hello. I hope you had a nice month and you had a chance to read some good things over the course of May. I want to discuss all of the books that I read over the previous month. Just give brief summaries and any quick thoughts or feelings I have about all of these titles. I read six books in total and some short stories, uh, although one of these books I adored so much I reread it in its entirety from beginning to end, so I'll get into that in a little bit. I was quite busy um, with some work this previous month, and also I went on holiday for over a week. I did get some good quality reading time because we had a number of train journeys, but obviously during the day we were out in the countryside or, or in the city um, just enjoying ourselves. And you know, I really enjoy reading short stories aloud to my husband, so I did read him a number from the new Grantham magazine, uh, the best of young British novelists issue, the most recent one. And I think out of all of these, uh, a couple of our favorites, um, there was one by Thomas Morris called Wales, which is about a father and son relationship. And Thomas Morris writes in a really interesting, realistic way that gives a lot of psychological insight. I completely adored his debut collection, uh, called We Don't Know What We're Doing. And very excitingly, later this year, he has a new collection coming out uh, called Open Up. So I'm really looking forward to reading that. Uh, I also, we also really enjoyed um, this story called Best Last Minute Spa Deal for Under 40 pounds by Yara Rodriguez Fowler. And uh, yeah, just the, the style of this story. There's a siren going by. Um, yeah, the, the style of that she writes this story with this dialogue that quickly whips back and forth was just really engaging and fun and made me really want to read um, her most recent novel called There Are More Things, um, which I've been slightly hesitant about because I'd read or I'd started reading her debut novel and just didn't really get on with it. But this really made me want to return and try more of her work. Um, also, on my own, um, I've been in the early in the morning. Um, I've been reading some short stories from this collection called Gods of Want by K. Min Chain, um, which came out last year and has the most beautiful cover. Um, look at how this spreads out like this. Um, it's so gorgeous. And these stories um, are about family and families and queer relationships, but give such a interesting angle on them. They're, they're almost kind of gossipy, but in a really intelligent and engaging way. I'm looking at family life in kind of expressing all of the opinions and stories of different family members, um, not necessarily giving any names, but designating the, the relationships between all of these family members. And that somehow builds up in a way which is much more true and gives almost like a bodily sense of these different family members. Some of them are living, some of them are dead, but just how there is a presence of these families that are crowding together in these spaces and kind of impinging upon the life of um, the, the central character in a way um, which is partly loving and partly annoying and so it just feels really true to life and uh, they're, yeah so they're kind of fantastical um, but also give this like strong sense of family life in the real world. I'm um, really compelling, really interesting. So I'm looking forward to finishing this collection. Also, just this morning, I finished reading Kalabazuma Nelson's new novel, Small Worlds. And this author writes in such a sensitive and moving way about his character's interior lives and the way they relate to people and the larger world around them. Uh, it follows the story of Stephen in the early 2010s when he's making the uneasy transition uh, from teenage his teenage years to his young adulthood. Um, he's just going away to university for the first time. And it's uh, following summers in over the course of these three years, which is this period 
these periods of like great opportunity, but also great change, um, which is exciting, but also scary and uncomfortable and difficult. And I think any young people could really relate to this story or people who have had really struggled in that tricky transition period um, between their teenage years and young adulthood, which is really scary. You don't know what's going to happen in your life. You don't know and necessarily know what you want to do with your life or if you want to settle down or if you want to remain free and open and all of these questions going on and the particular issues he faces as a young black man in in London um, from he has Ghanaian heritage and um, so it's also very much about uh, so it's about his romantic relationships and his relationships with his friends but also very much about his relationships with his parents and this is portrayed in such a moving way and you know in this transition in this time in his life, um, how his relationship with his parents shift from one of parenting to one of just bonds um, between family members and how he's able to connect with them, with his mother kind of through her cooking and his father through his music. It's portrayed in such a, a moving way and um, and the, the tension, especially between him and his father and how they're not able to relate to each other in some ways um, it's it's so well done and by the end of the novel I was just completely swept into this story um, he makes a really interesting narrative shift later on in the novel um, so most of the novel is told in the first person which is very different from his debut novel uh, open water which is all in the second person but then there is a shift to the second person later in the novel but where in his first novel Open Water, I felt like this was a way of really exploring the, um, the, the selfhood of this young man and how he was seeing himself from the outside while also inhabiting um, this, this body. And, but in this novel, it's, the second person is used as a way of uh, uh, creating this empathy between father and son um, in a way which yeah, is, is done so well um, and really brought me around to this novel because I wasn't quite sure about it at, at first in this first person voice. Um, sometimes there's a bit more telling, you know, rather than, than showing. Um, he kind of explains uh, a bit too much in some sections where I felt like he could have allowed scenes and dialogue um, to portray what he was discussing. He just kind of tells you outright. And in that way, I felt like it wasn't quite as effective as in his debut novel. But, but also there were some great moments of dialogue and connection between the characters and the way he writes about this I mean, in such a, a dynamic way to show these moments in these characters' lives, but also um, the, the difficulties he faces as a young black man in British society. And it portrays this on a number of different levels that um, I found very effective. Also, it was wonderful. I got to see um, the author speak at Brixton Library and he was actually interviewed by his sister and this made it such an interesting conversation because they were they tried to have this formality in the, the their Q and A's with each other but all obviously had um, this connection with each other and familiarity with each other. And um, so it made the, the conversation really engaging um, to, to listen to. And, um, and as he was talking about this novel and wanting to open out spaces for him and um, his family and friends and community um, to, to create these spaces where they could really be themselves. He broke down in tears and it was just such a, a, a moment of um, such sensitivity and openness and honesty um, that I found it really moving. I also read this quite big novel In Ascension by Martin McInnes and I read it twice because uh, I was so gripped by this story 
and really intrigued by it and just wanted to spend more time in this this voice. Uh, the, the, the narrator of this is a woman who is a scientist and she's really fascinated with the origins of life but also the um, the the questions uh, to do with our our universe and the the workings of our planet and how she does this on a number of expeditions um, which search into the the bottoms the deepest depths of the, the ocean and what she and a team of scientists discover there and how this leads to advancements um, that allow them to go to the furthest reaches of outer space and how this opens up a sense of, of wonder uh, about the world and our universe and life and the meaning of life um, is so wonderful and and touching. I, I this, this novel does touch uh, a lot on, on some of my favorite geeky subject matter of of things to do with outer space and um, and it and uh, there's a section in it sort of um, where it references the the Voyager expedition where um, you know we sent out um, this probe into outer space um, to take pictures but also it's continued traveling out into the the universe and how he brings that into the story uh, is so wonderful. Um, it, it just like inspired the sense of awe in me and made me want to, to keep reading about it and um, and to, to read around it and discover more uh, like about our worlds, but also get in contact in the, the with the natural worlds um, in a way that I don't often do because I live in the city and, and you know, so I'm kind of cut off from it. And um, yeah, so it made me want to like ex immediately escape back out into the country to uh, to explore um, the stars in the sky and um, to, to spend time swimming in the ocean and just just learn to love our, our world again. And I know that sounds really schmaltzy, but it, it really inspired this, this sense in me. And I just think it's such a wonderful novel. I also read another book from the Women's Prize uh, shortlist, uh, Black Butterflies by Priscilla Morris, which is a debut novel uh, main, beginning in uh, the year 1992 in Sarajevo as the siege of the city is beginning and um, the the, the central female character who's an artist, um, she finds herself trapped in this city. Um, her husband and her mother have left for the English countryside to stay with their daughter and um, she thinks she's going to, to join them um, but then as tensions escalate, um, she's not able to leave the city and resources start to dwindle. Um, it's really harrowing following her journey. And the, the way this story is written, it's it's written, I would say, like in quite a straight forward way, the, the prose style of it, but because of the subject matter and the emotion of this story, it's so powerful. I think that style really suits this kind of novel and um, so yeah it did make me want to learn more about the the strife of this particular historical conflict but also you know made me aware of how people are continuing to, to suffer in the world and obviously I started thinking about the war in Ukraine and so as, shortly after finishing this book I read um, this memoir which I've been meaning to get to you for a while called The Death of a Soldier Told by His Sister and uh, it does exactly what it says in the the title it's it's a memoir about how the author lost her brother um, as he was fighting fighting against Russian forces on the front line um, as a Ukrainian and um, how this happened a decade ago and um, so the the conflict has been going on for a long time though the larger world has only been aware of it much more recently as um, as the the fighting escalated and the invasion um, became much more overt and um, so she talks about that in this memoir um, she she wrote it more recently so is able to reference these recent political events but also give a context of how this 
escalation happened and, and why it happened and to give a very personal side of the, the story, not just because she lost a family member because of this conflict, um, but because she is a historian that's, that's aware of the histories of wars and why they occur and looking at specific issues to do in Ukraine, um, not just um, not just criticizing um, Russia for this invasion, but, but also being quite critical of bureaucracy in Ukraine and sexism that occurs in the, the military and um, how that is affecting um, this conflict, but is also, she's also quite critical of the, the West and uh, the, the media's um, interest in the war, um, which only just occurred very recently, even though, as I said, this has been going on for a long time. Um, so this was a really interesting and moving memoir to, to read, both for the personal details and the larger context about the conflicts that she gives. And she also incorporates some elements of uh, kind of folklore into the, the story in a surprising way, which is um, really touching and meaningful, um, which was also done in Black Butterflies and was also done in uh, another novel I read, Whale, um, by, by Chion Myon Kwan, um, which was uh, shortlisted for the International Booker Prize. And you could say this is kind of like a collection of folklore type tales that are connected with each other, mainly looking at a mother and daughter um, relationship. But the way it was handled in this novel just didn't feel as successful um, to me. Uh, it, it was really engaging um, because it is so creative how he tells these larger than life stories of, of these characters and their strife and um, their successes as well as their failures. Um, but the way he handles these characters, it sort of felt like um, he was both making fun of them at some points and objectifying them and because the the way um, the the author isn't really made into a character um, himself I felt like if he had been he might have been able to achieve some distance from how the descriptions of these characters are framed um, but because it is just told in this kind of omniscient voice. And, and that wouldn't give him a, like a pass about these things, but he could have incorporated it into the story in a way which um, gave some distance from it or context for why these comments were being made. Because as it was, um, some of the adjectives used to describe these characters and the ways that they are described um, just felt like, yeah, it was just poking fun at them. And, and so, yeah, I had real difficulty with um, some of this novel and uh, which I talked about in a lot more depth than in a whole video. But, um, but yeah, I know that this novel is also much beloved by a lot of people, but I, I feel like the, the way that it, it touches upon South Korean history and political conflict, um, it, it really only brushes over the surface of that and it could have gone into it in a lot more detail and depth and um, so that was another issue I, I had with this book. Now I also read Stillborn by Guadalupe Natel, which I found a lot more successful and which I was hoping to win and if you want to know some gossip I, I made a whole vlog about going to the ceremony for the International Booker Prize and um, but the I, I was told um, not by any of the judges this is actually like third hand information so if you want to, I, I do kind of believe it, but, um, but, uh, but also, you know, it might not be true. But I was told that um, the judges, when they were having their deliberations, it really came down to both Time Shelter and Stillborn, which they were debating between about which to, to crown the winner. Now, they went with Time Shelter, which was an interesting choice. It was an interesting book, but I, my heart belonged a lot more strongly with Stillborn um, because this novel um, about two women following them over the course of their lives and their struggles to do with parenting, um, whether they wanted to be parents or, or not, and um, all the questions surrounding that, but also motherhood in a much broader way, um, looking at a number of different characters' lives and how they approach motherhood or mothering in various different 
forms um, how we take on these parenting roles in our lives and or choose not to and the way that this novel is so approaches this in such a non-judgmental way I, I found really moving and striking and um, yeah it's a book that's really going to stay with me and um, which I found very touching to read. Um, so yeah, I, I really enjoyed this. I'm a shame it, it wasn't the winner, but I was just so glad that <laughs> my two least favorite books from um, the International Booker list um, didn't win um, that I was I was kind of relieved to see Time Shelter win. So I would love to know if you've read any of these books, if you agree with me or disagree with me, I'd love to hear your thoughts and feelings about all of these books, or I'd love to hear about other books you read last month, um, either your favorite books or your least favorite books um, that you've read in recent weeks. Um, please let me know about that in the comments below. I really enjoy hearing about what you've been reading as well. But I hope you're doing well and reading good things, and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.